Welcome aboard the Boat Buyers Secret Weapon Podcast, where we're dedicated to helping first-time and experienced boat buyers find the right boat at the best price, so they have years and years of boating fun, because life truly is better on a boat. Today's podcast is sponsored by the Boat Buyers Secret Weapon YouTube channel. Don't pay too much for your next boat. Just visit BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash save to watch a short video. Now, let's hop aboard and have some fun. Welcome to Boater Secret Weapon. I'm your host, Captain Matt, and today we're talking ways your boat can sink, and not only why they can sink, but what to do to make sure that yours doesn't. So let's jump in to this video. The number one thing on a stern drive that can make it sink are cracked bellows, a problem with your bellows. You can see kind of the the dry rot and the cracking on the bellows here. You got your exhaust bellows, your shift cable steering bellows, and you can look inside. This is what it's doing. It's allowing things to run from the boat to the drive, and you can see the, the bellows here, the bellows here, and there's another set that uh, is probably back in here. Those bellows are designed to keep it watertight and to allow it the flex as that motor trims. Well, if you don't pay attention and your bellows get cracked or they get a tear in it or the hose clamp comes off, water can just rush in your boat and it won't take any time at all. So that's an important area to inspect on your boat, uh, especially if you keep your boat in the water and you're not going to be around it for a while. Just make sure you lay eyes on it. And you, if it uh, doesn't come out of the water a lot, you just want to kind of put your fingers up in there while you're out in the water and uh, make sure it's still nice and soft and supple. And also be aware of critters can chew through that rubber as well. So you always want to have your drive all the way down if you're going to store it in the water. Because even one night, a little critter gets in there, starts to chew on some rubber, makes a hole, and boom, your boat's at the bottom. The next, probably the most common overall, are through-haul fittings that fail. They're almost always going to be plastic, and over time, the plastic wears down, breaks down from the UV rays, the sun, the salt, if you're in salt water, and eventually they're going to crack, and they, if they're below the waterline especially, they're going to let water in. Um, so I always recommend either stainless steel or brass through-haul fittings. You'll notice if you're shopping for a boat, the more expensive boats tend to use stainless. The cheaper boats tend to use plastic, which is fine for a period of time, but just keep your eyes on them because if you have one that's missing or one that's damaged, you have an easy access for water to get into the boat. The next are the scuppers. It could be several different things with the scuppers. Maybe your scuppers are clogged. Maybe you've got it's wintertime and they've iced up and that water rains in and they don't flow out the scuppers as they should. You can see this is what it looks like inside the boat. And this is what it looks like outside of the boat. There's a little check valve there so it can flow out, but it shouldn't flow back in. Well, you get ice there. Maybe you get leaves or some breeze that's stuck in there. You get a big heavy rain. That water can't escape, and boom, your boat gets too heavy, and it goes down. When you tie your boat up, you want to make sure that there's no way your boat can get sucked under the lip of the dock and then the tide rise. So you're, you're all tied up, everything looks great, you go away, you go to the restaurant for a couple hours to have some dinner and some fun, and you come back and your boat is now underwater because it got caught on the lip of the dock, and now the tide's coming up, but your boat can't come up, so what happens, that water is eventually going to flow in. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you tie your boat up in a way that it's, you usually want to use long lines, but you want it to have some movement to float around. And you also want to make sure that there's no, the way you tie it up, there's no way for that boat to get up and under on the dock side. So if you've got a piling here, you want to make sure that you, you have a, a line on the back here crossing over that's pulling it away from the dock so it can't slide up and under and cause devastation. Same thing can happen if you've got your lines tied too short. If the lines are tied too short and it's a fixed dock, you tie it up at low tide and now there it has nowhere to go as the tide raises or vice versa and that water can just flood right in and it often happens in conjunction with getting caught under the lip of the dock you can see that little bit of the bow flare is probably catching under there so it's probably a combination but both of those things can happen the longer your lines the better you're going to be to have be able to adjust to those tides and your boat not be sloppy. That's why you always want to have at least six dock lines on your boat so you can use spring lines and you can use cross lines and you can use really long lines so that you've got some float in it. Uh, we talk about it in the Best Boat Captain on the Water Training and get into more details. The next, maybe not something you would think about, but 
the freshwater hookup at the marina. You have the freshwater hookup at the marina. You turn it on so you can take your showers, you can do your dishes, you can clean the boat, whatever, and you leave it on. You leave the boat. Well, what happens when a fitting cracks, a hose clamp pops off? Um, for whatever reason, that now you've got just a hose basically flowing all the way into your boat. It's a common cause in cruisers, boats with fresh water. If you're going to leave that hooked up to the, the dock water or the city water, you want to make sure anytime you leave your boat, you turn that water off. Don't just let it flow because if something does happen, boom, your boat's going to be underwater and some significant damage. <laughs> Next is just rain. You add rain, a boat that's in the water, tied up at the dock, some way anchored out, rain, your bilge pump float switch floats up, it runs for a period of time, eventually it runs the battery dead, now what happens? Well, bilge pump isn't pumping when the battery's dead, or the bilge pump just doesn't work at all, and next thing you know, all that rainwater collects in there, you've got a, I've got, as I'm recording this, we had just a downpour, and our backyard is flooded, that happens on the water, your bilge pump isn't working, Next thing you know, your boat's underwater. It happens all the time. Next, you knew this was going to be on the list. You leave the drain plug out. Hey, just, I know it can get hectic at the dock. Just make sure that's on your checklist. We've got a checklist in the um, that you can get in the Best Boat Captain on the Water Training, in the Trailer Like a Pro, and the free Boater Boot Camp. Don't forget that drain plug. It can sink right at the ramp, and it doesn't take much time at all of a hose clamp a hose on any of your your raw water hoses where water is going to be coming in from the exterior into your boat running through the system you can be running down the channel you can be having a great time and little do you know there's water just flowing into your boat because you've got a hose clamp that failed you've got a hose that failed maybe you've got a, a major leak in your manifold which is probably some other signs of all of these pay attention to the temperature gauges water can come you're you're sucking water in from the from the source and you're running it to cool your engine if any one of those systems fail that water can potentially be flowing right in another area that it can flow right in is if you have one of your seacocks fail where the valve is in the wrong position or it's um it should be closed and it's open or just the fitting fails um you know it's and now you've got water flowing into your boat and, and potentially putting it underwater and we also have just operator error you've seen it at haul over you've seen it on boat zone you've seen it on um qualified captain the operator isn't competent to operate in some of the conditions and they stuff the bow water comes in their bilge pump can't keep up and they don't make the right adjustments and boom the boat goes under or they've got a following sea and they take a wave right over the stern again that bilge pump can't keep up the scuppers can't keep up and it just drags that boat down next thing you know you get too much water in the boat and it's at the point of no return and things are over. You want to check out the boater boot camp <laughs> and the best boat captain on the water so you don't end up on qualified captain. You don't end up as one of those fail videos. Learn how to operate your boat properly, and they're easy to avoid if you know how to operate your boat, and uh, there's a lot of resources. Ours are fantastic. You can check those out. Boater boot camp, which we mentioned, totally free, boaterbootcamp.com. Uh, if you're looking to buy a boat, Boat Buyer's Toolkit, that's free as well, boatersecretweapon.com slash toolkit, and the best captain on the water training the best training on how to handle and maneuver your boat i believe that's on the market boat buyer secret weapon.com slash captain thanks a lot remember life truly is better on a boat let's pull up the anchor and run this podcast back to the dock we'll be back again with another helpful and fun episode next time if you'd like to be a guest on the podcast visit boat buyers secret weapon.com slash guest and i'll help offer insights into your boat research and shopping experience also, we'd appreciate it if you took just two minutes to rate and review this podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. It helps others find us so we can help more boaters. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it in your boating groups on social media. They will certainly thank you. And by the way, if you haven't already, grab your free Boat Buyers Secret Weapon Toolkit at BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash toolkit. And so you don't pay too much for your next boat, visit BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash save for a short video. Now, before we go, I want to leave you with a few first-time boating tips for when you own your new boat. Number one, know your local boating laws, basic navigation rules, and how to operate your boat safely. It'll make boating even more fun for everyone. Two, 
be aware of your wake at all times and pay attention to no wake zones because you are responsible for your wake. When maneuvering at slow speeds, you can put out an enormous wake. If going slow, be courteous, save some fuel, and drop down to idle speed, just in forward gear to ensure there is no wake. This could save you an expensive ticket and will keep you from being that guy on your waterway. Number three, boats do not have headlights. They have docking lights specifically made for seeing in tight quarters and docking. Do not turn your docking lights on while cruising down the water. It can blind other boaters and is very dangerous and, again, could save you an expensive ticket. Number four, follow the maintenance schedule for your boat. Change the oil, impeller, gear loop, winterize if you need to winterize in your area. Inspect your trailer tires, bearings, and grease the hubs if you're a trailer boater to ensure you don't experience expensive and unnecessary repairs that will impact your boating time. Number five, always double check your plug is in, your battery is charged, and the fuel is full before heading out for a day on the water. It could just save your boating day. And if you're a trailer boater, I've got a few extra tips. Number one, at the boat ramp, prepare your boat your gear, and your guests in the staging area. Then when you're ready, back down the ramp, unload the boat, head to the parking lot, and right back down to your boat to be fast and courteous to your fellow boaters and don't tie up that ramp unnecessarily. Next, use transom tie-down straps when trailing your boat. Very bad things can happen if you don't, and they do happen. Three, Check everything in the boat is secure before heading down the road. Seat cushions, gear, keys, towels, even tubes and lily pads can get blown out when pulling your boat down the highway or interstate. And most important, have fun. Enjoy your boat and get on the water as much as possible because life truly is better on a boat. Until next time, this is your friend in boating, Captain Matt.